Hi, welcome to Pei Wen's Snow. Today, I'm very happy to introduce you a world-renowned cellist, conductor, and pianist, Alexander Rudin. Hi, Mr. Hello. Rudin. Hi. Nice to see you again. And nice to see you, and nice to be here again in, in Taipei. Oh, thank you for the beautiful concert you performed on Thursday night. Um, Mr. Rudin has performed such a beautiful, it's all German program. Would you like to tell us about <laughs> Yeah, that the was a, there was an idea to combine uh, two pieces by Beethoven and two pieces by Schubert. So with uh, my friend Lina Ye, we decided to play a uh, variation by Beethoven on the <coughs> Zauberflöte from Mozart, <coughs> <coughs> and then Sonata number no. 4 by Beethoven, and two pieces by Schubert. One is very famous, everybody is playing, Arpeggione Sonata, and as Schubert didn't compose any other piece for cello. So, so you we arrange a beautiful Schubert violin sonata. And tell yeah. me, how did you do that? How long did it take you to arrange a piece? <laughs> you know, when, when I was young, I arranged many violin pieces and I played many okay. violin pieces. Not only this, but much more, more difficult pieces. Like but this one is fantasy. very difficult, has a difficult left hand, but he did it so perfect, you know. <laughs> it's very beautiful music, so we decided to play this program here. And Mr. Rudin's uh, Schubert arpeggio is wonderful, perfect, perfect on the left hand shift. I don't even know, how did you do it? <laughs> Thank you. It's not, I, th I have <laughs> my own opinion about, about uh, this, but uh, yeah, I, I, this is one of my favorite pieces, of course, the Schubert arpeggio sonata. This is one of your favorite pieces. Yeah. Um, what, do you have a favorite? Another cello repertoire, like a concerto? Oh, you know, many, many. I have also pieces which I don't like, but I don't tell you. No, <laughs> I don't want to tell. But of course, I like many. I, I like very much Baroque music, very much. And uh, Russian repertoire. And, uh, you know, there are many pieces which are not... Because we all play approximately the same repertoire of cellist. We are very, as other people, we are very Well, you know, cello only have a five concertos and... <laughs> no, <laughs> I think, you know, we have, we have, uh, <laughs> we have not, not hundreds, but 30, 40 very good concertos. And I try to, to play all, all with some, some music which are not very known. Mm -hmm. I find it extremely interesting, yeah. And I, what I did, I did Dvorak first concerto in A major, which probably nobody or may not many people know I recorded this also, this, this Dvorak A major and other pieces by Martin, wow. by yeah. Enescu. There are many, very many good pieces. Just let's be interest Can interested. Can maybe come in Taiwan, play for us next time? With pleasure, wow, I'd like yeah. to hear this With Dvorak. Pleasure. Um, okay, you were only 12 years old. Mr. Rudin had won number one prize at Prague and also he won Tchaikovsky uh, prize in 1982, 1978, and also when Mr. Rudin was 15 years old, he had won number one Bach prize at Leipzig. Tell me about this, all this, your yeah, this wonderful competition. The, um, well, I don't, don't want to talk about all of them, but I would tell about Bach competition in 1976. It was, at, the, at that time, it was very famous competition, but for cello, uh, it was organized first time, and I was very lucky and very honored to be there and to get the first prize. And I must say that the program, um, what did you the have to prepare? program, it was very serious. You know, ah. all participants who had to play two suites, home complete, two suites by Bach. Is that you, of your choice or their choice? Uh, there was, I think, one suite was uh, on their choice, number six. Whoa, that's the most difficult and, one. And, and I think I played number five also. I don't, now I don't remember. I think number five. Oh, that's also the most and, uh, difficult And some etudes, some so complete sonatas, some mm. Brahms, Beethoven, and so really big, big program. It was very interesting. I still have the best memory about this time. Do you have to memorize when you perform it? Everything was, of course, uh, by heart, yeah. I think now, nowadays, some <laughs> in some competition you, you may play with music. Really? Uh -huh. I think now, now it's, it's more liberal, I think. How about in the famous Tchaikovsky competition, mm. is everything played by heart? Yes, too? yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, at that time it was everything. It was not, uh, not uh, 
not 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 even argued about it. It was absolutely clear. Once yeah. upon a time, uh, Mr. Rudin was a prize winner of a Tchaikovsky competition, but now he's the judge of the Tchaikovsky competition. No, it's right? not. It's well, not. It's you? not completely right because <laughs> I was judge of Tchaikovsky competition three times, and one once I was a president of jury of Tchaikovsky competition. It was at two thousand two, and as I was a president, I could I had a right to change a little bit the spirit and the atmosphere and the program, which I did. And I'm very happy that I succeed to put uh, the original version of Rococo for participants. Mm -hmm. And since that I was uh, not judging Tchaikovsky competition. And I was invited in several competitions, but since I'm still playing, I find it more exciting, exciting to play than to sit in jury. Some, sometimes it just it's not 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 as not as interesting as to do something more artistic. You travel around the world as a soloist and a conductor. Tell me about your Musica Viva. That you started in 1988, right? Yeah, I started with Musica Viva in '88, but mm -hmm. uh, the orchestra existed already. So now the orchestra is 35 years old, and it's very unique. Um, orchestra because um, we play also very unusual repertoire we I mean we play basic repertoire with the new ideas with the fresh ideas without without very much uh, trusting old tradition so we try to be fresh in you have interpretation. A, you have a, like a baroque classical music and also you cover no we music. we play classical music we try to to be in a in classical music uh, frame but uh, but we, we our our repertoire is very wide. We play from Baroque till modern music and with also from small ensemble like ten, twelve people mm -hmm. with chamber orchestra to uh, forty five, fifty people to the big symphony. So it's a, it's very very live um collec collective, very live live orchestra. The and by the way we have mm -hmm. been here once in Taiwan. Oh, it was okay. maybe twenty years ago long time but oh. it was a little bit different oh. uh, yet it was not as as good as as it now but we had very many concerts maybe you could lead them bring here very it was very nice experience yeah, hopefully <laughs> and you know i saw you perform with uh, natalia goodman many times and tell me your experience working with her <laughs> you yes. performed the pia yeah. piano and <laughs> yeah we 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 are in very good relations with very very friendly r relations with uh, with Natalia Gutman since maybe about 20 years when we were first time sitting in the Tchaikovsky competition as a judge judges oh, and then okay. then we communicate not very much but always very friendly and we play together and last time we played together it was two months ago we oh played really? very nice very what interesting play? Uh -huh. we play very interesting piece uh, for two cello by one Finnish modern composer. The piece, piece was commissioned by Manchester Cello Fe Festival, which doesn't exist anymore, in 2003 or four. And so we played it now in Moscow, with Moscow Conservatory Student Orchestra. Uh, the composer's name is Kalevi Aho. It's, two it's double, double, double concerto. It was very, very nice experience. Speaking of Moscow Conservatory, that's where you got your conductor conducting degree. And now that your faculty at Moscow Conservatory, you actually are teaching chamber music, but not cello. Why? Why is that? There are many reasons uh, why I don't teach cello. Uh, so one, one, one of the reasons that I think I'm much better teacher in chamber music because it's more interesting for me. You can speak with your young colleagues about music more than if you just teach cello. If you teach cello, you have to speak. You, you have to know. Uh, about many technical things and you have to discuss many technical things which maybe it's not for me I, I don't know maybe this 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 field so 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 oh, well and, and, and I'm not I'm your not technique is perfect I, do, I don't <laughs> know many things I'm doing just naturally I, I cannot explain many things to because you. your child prodigy and everything comes I don't natural know. I, don't, I don't know <laughs> yes and uh, so this, 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 this is actually the main reason and um, I had uh, sometimes extremely good uh, students and many of them are winners of many competitions pianists and o also the other reason is that you you deal with not only with, with cellist which is a little bit boring 
<laughs> but you're dealing you're with, doing with, with a, a group of pianist people. with a violinist, so it's mm -hmm. more fresh, and I, I like it very much. I have some master class uh, I teach somewhere else a little bit, uh, cello just not regularly, but uh, but this is uh, actually in Moscow Conservatory. I also have a very small class. Um, you were successful conductor, cellist, and do you have time to perform chamber music? With, uh, sometimes, yeah. yeah sometimes, sometimes I have time mm -hmm. to perform chamber music, mm -hmm. uh, but um, performing chamber music it's very much the the joy you get or you don't get very much depends on with whom you are playing. Yeah, that could be fantastic people and very charming person, but if you have different Opinion, ideas, uh -huh. opinions about music, uh -huh. it becomes a little bit complicated. And uh, other other possibility that the the, the person is quite terrible but you have same same opinion <laughs> so you know the then best would you then would you <laughs> choose to sit down with that person i don't know what the, the have you choose. ever done it before actually, because they you I, share sometimes the same you idea. cannot choose no but <laughs> most 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 it's nice person and more, more or less the same approach to music oh that is very funny you're the first person that's so honest to tell me <laughs> this um besides the regular repertoire i i saw on the your biography says you also pre do a lot of premiere on the modern Russian music, right? There's a many. Would you like to tell us about it? Well, I I'm not uh, very much specialized in modern music generally, but I did some. I I had some relations with uh, Russian composers. They're your friends. I met no. I that did have so many. I di I didn't. I was not. I don't have so many. F generally, that I don't have many friends. But I I knew. I knew. Many Russian composers like Schnitke, or uh, I was studying with Denisov, Edison Denisov, the one of the our f uh, m most important uh, avant-garde composer of okay. uh, 60, 70, and 80. So I was studying with him orchestration uh, when I was studying conducting. And um, Silvestrov, of course, this is the part of all of them. Um, I all of uh, the pieces by all of them I, I played. And uh, I like to sometimes to play modern music. Mm -hmm. I like very much to play uh, Andrei Golovin. Uh, this is uh, also a modern Russian composer who writes in very conserv. I mean, uh, he used quite conservative language, but uh, his uh, view, his uh, his music is extremely sincere and beautiful. So I think you should not. It's not necessary to use extremely complicated language to be uh, to to tell something by your music. You can use just very few and very normal chords and very normal, beautiful melody and then still you are, it's very, it could be very powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we d I don't play very, very much, very often modern music. But is it fair to ask you who is your favorite composer? May I have oh. many favorite composers. Mm -hmm. I cannot say really I, I, I have, I have some with. unfavorite composers, but <laughs> there are not so many. <laughs> but of course, of, of course I, I, li I really like many. I like very much Baroque music and first of all, Johann Sebastian Bach. But I always like very much his son, uh, Philipp Emanuel, whose birthday now uh, we celebrate 30, 300 anniversary. And uh, there are festival in Moscow dedicated to Philipp Emanuel Bach. And we also play very much of Philippe Emanuel with my orchestra. We recorded cello, flute concerts, and we play many Telemann. So Baroque music is generally extremely attractive. I like very much uh, romantic. I like Haydn very much. I like romantic music. And first of all, most mm -hmm. of all, Schumann, of course. And uh, I like Russian music, Rachmaninov, Tchaikovsky, of course. So many, actually I many. I Are there composers who might don't like or let's say that maybe I'm not yet ready to like them <laughs> but I don't want to 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 to, call, to, to say the name you're lucky it's to be very private <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky to be a Russian because mm -hmm. the Russian has produced so many great great composer I love Rachmaninoff mm -hmm. so much. me too this person must be so romantic <laughs> I and very noble, you know, it's, it's a very noble person. Mm -hmm. Even if you see his face in the mm -hmm. picture, you see how noble uh, uh, personality he has. I think he's very tall. Tall and, yeah, but it's really... And he has a big hand that I can, I can never play yeah. his piano concerto. Yeah. And he was, he's a great, he's a 
genius pianist and composer or so he was uh, in the beginning of the century we had such a people like uh, George Enesco for instance he was a, it was a, another great great personality great composer great conductor pianist violinist it's uh, I think we and a little bit under his estimate still this name but we should by the way he has very nice cello pieces two sonatas very wow. very interesting sonatas Okay. And uh, Sinfonia Concertante for cello and orchestra, which probably mm, Chelis doesn't know it. So I play all of these pieces. And oh, you perform in Russia? Uh, I yes, and uh, I, 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 I think I'm. It's very important for me to, Please to get us, new us pieces. Please teach us to play. <laughs> Come to Taiwan, perform for us, and I'll pick it Hopefully. up. Hopefully. <laughs> wow. Um, you, how many records have you produced so far? Mo more than 30 for sure yeah maybe 35, 35? something like this yeah that's very impressive do you have any more plan to record some i more? have plans but uh, the, the my last recording came uh, last summer that was dvorak a major concerto number one who does can who i buy it in taiwan i uh -huh. don't know it is on the market yeah so it's a concerto and string serenade with our orchestra so it's dvorak and okay. i have some other plans but I don't, uh, maybe I will, I hope I will realize it maybe this year, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, after this Asia trip, what's next? Are you, what's, after what's your next other trip, performance? Yeah. <laughs> you I have, have, I have concerts, season. actually, actually have now busy, a little bit, yeah, busy, Very busy ski seasons. schedule, because I have concert on the 23rd now, uh, mm -hmm. in two days after I arrive, we play with or my orchestra uh, in Moscow, we play Greek and Mendelssohn uh, string program, and then I, the next next day I go to Istanbul and I play with a pianist, with very good Italian pianist. We play some Hindemith uh, Beethoven and and the uh, Debussy program, oh, and then okay. in Moscow again I play this Andrei Golovin about whom I told his beautiful piece Elegy, uh, not Elegy, Canzone, Canzone for cello and strings. Yeah, so this oh. three concert are very close. Is it fair to ask you which is your favorite conducting piano, cello, <laughs> chamber music ensemble? <laughs> uh, it depends how mm -hmm. how successful is your concert. Yeah, If you feel good during the concert, if, if it works, everything doesn't matter what. If you feel that you're making music successfully, so, so this is my favorite in this moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course cello is something very special for me because it's my first instrument. Oh. It's very, yes. very uh. intimate feeling with how cello. How old were you when you six. first started cello? Six. You six, six years, years old. So my first. Uh, and is really any of your parents a musician? Uh, my right? mother was uh, always a um, uh, music teacher, and so I think. He, uh, what yeah, does she play? Uh, uh, piano. Okay. Actually, actually, because of her, I, I, I think I, I have most of my musical ideas. I still have most of my musical ideas oh. because of her uh -huh. and my father was uh, when he was teenager he was also studying piano and cello then he became a medical doctor that's amazing so we have <laughs> more or less musical family uh, background your family are very intellectual smart talented and so your mom is your first piano teacher and no she <laughs> never t taught me uh -huh. to, to play piano she she was mostly singing she was she had very very beautiful voice so and just very extremely interesting ideas musical ideas actually she was very talented but not in the way of performing on the stage because there are very many people extremely talented but who do not have talent to to be alone on the stage and play for people so pr probably this talent she does oh, she, she didn't have a professional pianist. she was she was a she was a, te a piano teacher but mm -hmm. um, i think she was very 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 gifted inside as a musician mm -hmm. but not as a concert player mm -hmm. but she gave you all the wonderful ideas that's i think mm -hmm. i think many oh that's wonderful oh you also want to tell me who's the who is the most unforgettable cello teacher you've ever had i had only one teacher in my life oh the cello okay i uh, i was i'm uh, it's my experience is quite unique i started mm -hmm. to 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 study cello when I was six, and I finished when I was twenty-two, in th yeah different level of schools. Yeah, oh, funny. and then I have had only one teacher in what my is life. His name? his name is Lev Yevgrafov, and he was uh, he was a student of, uh, of Rostropovich, and he 
we are now in very good contact with him. He's still teaching how very old successfully. Is, how old is your teacher now? He, uh, this year, uh, we will celebrate his 80th birthday. Oh, that's so amazing. Uh, uh -huh. Maybe you play something together. <laughs> yeah, we how played. About, how about we double? played. We played <laughs> something together. We had some recording together about some. Did you play Vivaldi? We played Vivaldi. We played some Marcello. I played for him the continuo for his Marcello recording, six sonatas, and we played some Handel this double sonata and some other pieces, small pieces. Yeah. How wonderful! Uh huh. Yeah. You must be his most proud student. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so very much to share with us with your wonderful ideas and I hope to see you in the near future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. All the Buddha. best for you. All the best. Thank you for watching. <laughs>